Simple Minds. I absolutely love that song. Don't you forget about me. It's nine minutes past eight. We're playing some amazing music this morning here on Sunday Breakfast. Lots more of that to come um, before 10 o'clock. And then, of course, after 10 o'clock when Laura's here with uh, programme through till two this afternoon. Now then, you know we all like to think of ourselves as a, a tolerant, open nation. Well, the statistics may prove otherwise. Over the last five years, religious or faith based hate crimes have been increasing. In Bath, a new service is being launched by the Faith Foundation to help those who've experienced abuse of that nature, well, as well as offering advice. It'll offer additional support to people who decide to report crimes to the police and to other authorities. Let's talk this morning to Nathan Hartley, the director of Bain's Faith Foundation. Morning, Nathan. Uh, good morning, Lucy. Thanks for inviting me on the show today. Well, you know, it's always great to talk to you, but what a sad subject to have to talk about, an upward trend in religious and faith-based hate crime. It, yeah, it's deeply quite worrying and distressing, actually. We've received this kind of statistics recently from the Home Office. They've released their 2020, 2021 statistics that show that there were 5,627 kind of uh, hate crimes in the UK that were kind of religiously or faith-based motivated. So people were being verbally abusive or showing threatening behaviour or, or harassing people because of their religion or their belief or a particular philosophy that they follow. And unfortunately, that, that trend has gone up over the last four or five years. You know, and we're seeing that huge, colossal, almost 6,000 faith-based hate crimes there every year in the UK. And we're seeing this right on our own doorsteps. Absolutely, absolutely. It's not just in the kind of big cities. We're seeing it everywhere. I mean, of, of those stats, 5,627, um, sadly, was all very sad, particularly sadly, 45% of that was against people who were Muslim, 22% uh, were, were anti-Semitic in nature, uh, and 9% were anti-Christian, and the other 16 were kind of broadly across the other religious faith groups. So unfortunately, uh, you know, the statistics are showing we're becoming more divided as a society. And so, you know, organisations like the Faith Foundation and others, we're trying to work really hard to educate people on, you know, the things that all people of religious traditions have in common, so we can try and work together more. Whose responsibility is it, Nathan, to change this kind of stat? You know, is it down to faith organisations? I mean, 45% of uh, hate crime against people who are of Muslim faith. Is mm -hmm. it the Muslim faith's responsibility to change that? Where, where does the responsibility lie? Oh, my initial response is it's a collective responsibility. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a Muslim's fault or a mosque's fault that people are being abusive towards no. them or, or you know... Uh, um, being offensive towards them. I think we have a collective responsibility in terms of a, a parents, how they educate their children. Uh, yes, faith leaders are different traditions. Uh, the media has a responsibility to try and educate people. Um, councils, schools, it's a kind of a collective thing to, to, to really show that, that, that this kind of behaviour just isn't acceptable. It just seems extraordinary that, you know, we continue to have to have discussions like this you know that the people somehow see that because someone worships in a different way or or you know or their, their you know their religious beliefs are, are different that somehow that's okay to form part of targeting them for that yeah absolutely um as well as this new advice service that we're providing uh, for local people we're also starting to work on the, the plans for the holocaust memorial day in january and, and and my very strong view is as we move further away from the event the events of the 1940s events like the holocaust are even more important for us all to understand in terms of what we can learn from them you know in terms of we have to make sure that things like that never happen again so absolutely we all have that kind of collective responsibility to work together and support each other I suppose the, the, the recent headlines that have been sort of swirling around over uh, the rapper Kanye West don't help in that direction either. Absolutely not, absolutely not. And I, I, on, a, on a personal level, I've always struggled since probably since I was a young age to understand why anybody would want to hate anyone else anyway. You know, we're, we're all intrinsically different. And, you know, when people in the public eye make statements uh, against people because of their, you know, their race or their religion or their background, you know, those people are people that are very influential. Kanye West 
will have a lot of fans, he will have a lot of followers, and people will hang on his every word. So when he makes comments that are anti-Semitic, it's completely not helpful. And it then kind of sets the whole public discourse back several years, because we're getting there, we're educating people, uh, but then when people make comments like that, it just doesn't help at all. So tell us how your new service works. Absolutely. So we're providing uh, a kind of advocacy service for people who would like to support uh, uh, a faith-based uh, or, or religion-based hate crime to the police. Often a lot of people want to report something to the police, but they feel nervous or they feel maybe even shy or embarrassed or they just don't know, you know, whether they should report it to the police. So what we will do, firstly, they can contact us. We've got a team, kind of an advocacy team, where we will give some kind of confidential advice initially on, on what their situation is. And then with them, we can support them, report it to the police. Uh, we've got some good connections with the local police. So we can, we can make sure that, you know, we're kind of metaphorically holding their hand if they do need to report a hate crime to, to the local police force. Is it difficult for some people to, to do so? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Often there's that kind of fear or stigma based on a number of reasons. Firstly, based on this idea that, oh, well, you know, somebody just called me a name because of my dress code or because of my diet or because of where I go on a Friday or a Saturday or a Sunday. Then I should just accept that because they're entitled to their free speech. So, yes, there's, you've got to jump over that hurdle. And then we have to kind of jump over the hurdle that people, particularly from ethnic minorities, might have... Um, concerns about going to the police. Uh, you know, in certain cultures, you know, we don't report to the police or we don't in engage authorities from outside our religious tradition. Well, we want to try and... Uh, so that's a big hurdle to try and overcome as well. So uh, showing people that they've actually been the victim of a hate crime is the first thing. And secondly, kind of helping them in that process of reporting it to the authorities. Nathan, as ever, really, really great to chat to you. I do know that if you want to find out more about the work of the Faith Foundation, uh, you can go into a search engine. Just type in Bath and North East Somerset Faith Foundation and it will lead you uh, to help and advice offered uh, by Nathan Hartley and others uh, based in Bath and North East Somerset. Thank you very much to Nathan. 16 minutes past eight. Let's get the latest weather forecast. Here's B Tucker. Hi, B.